Hello YouTube, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a text adventure game, or you could call this an Inform 7 tutorial, since that's what we're going to be using to make the text adventure game. <coughs> so, um, let me just tell you a little bit about this first. Inform 7 is uh, pretty much a tool that lets you make text adventure games, which you could probably assume, and it it does not come with a combat system, so you have to get something called an extension, which is kind of like an expansion pack, but for a uh, game creator. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it lets you add in new things. Um, that's kind of what it is, and it is not... A, in Form 6, the one before it, used to have um, programming. You had to have programming knowledge and do very advanced programming language, but this one's very simple so it's easy for people who don't have programming experience such as me to make a pretty cool game I have spent a long a long time with this researching and finding things and the reason I decided to make this tutorial is because um when I first got in form 7 uh, well whenever I get something that is kind of confusing to me and I don't understand at the start I go on YouTube to look for tutorials but the poem was um, and I did check today it seems to have no new tutorials that um all the tutorials there they were they were just abysmal and the reason they were abysmal was because the half of them didn't even didn't even sound like they knew what they were doing and the other half seemed like they knew what they were doing but they were teaching you the bare basics that you needed to know so in this I am going to start with the bare basics but I'm gonna get more advanced and more advanced to show you a lot of the cool things that let you do with Inform 7. I actually did find one tutorial that um, helped me in a way, and that tutorial taught you how to make um, it so you could talk to other characters. But other than that, there was absolutely nothing on YouTube. So I do give credit to that tutorial. I'll probably link it in the description. It does have something that will that is pretty useful. Being able to talk to characters is an important thing in Inform 7. I also will paste um, a lot of the codes or the, well, let me just show you in Form 7. This is in Form 7, and, um, this, let me go back to the bottom. This is what, uh, one of the more advanced codes would look like. One of these. I will paste something like that into there, so you can just copy it and then replace the certain words that you need to, so they work with your game. So what do you need to do before you start? Well, download in Form 7. So, I'll paste all these links in the description, or you can search Inform 7 on Google and go to the downloads section. They have it for Mac and Windows, and then all these Linux things, or Linux, I don't know how you say it. Uh, I do not like Linux, Linux, whatever you want to call it, and I honestly have no clue what this old devil's doing. But anyway, um, just download it for whichever. I actually prefer it for the Mac than the PC. But unfortunately, right now my Mac is broken and getting fixed, so I will be using the PC version. So, once you've done that, you're going to search Attack Extension on Google, and the second thing that comes up, you click on. Or you can just press the link in the description. If you don't trust me, then search it on Google. So, you'll get this, Attack Combat Extension, and it'll be like, well, uh, yeah. I have this article about this guy named Victor Gijbers. Gijbers. I think that's how you say his name, <coughs> has released, you know, a new combat <coughs> system for Inform. Um, so you click available from Victor's website, and it will download, and right now I have it right here. I actually download it, like, over four times, because I have tried to make this tutorial before, but it unfortunately didn't know it worked before. So, you open this up. Uh, first of all, I want to op open up Inform 7 for the first time. Just click start a new project. Um, and here we go. We have all our stuff here. Um, so really the only thing you actually need is this, which I would open up in Word or the default, um, text thing for PC. I'm not sure what it is because I've used Microsoft Word for the start. Like, I think it's a notepad, but I'm not exactly sure. This, these two things are manuals that are I think for the same I'm not sure why there are two except they'll just like tell you some things about it um it's really really long I would just suggest opening this um
Okay. Here we have this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy and paste this entire thing. Don't copy this. You can you don't need that. So just start here. Copy down to the bottom. <coughs> Okay, and don't copy this. Don't copy inform attack ends here or inform attack by Victor Gibshard starts here at the start. Just copy the stuff in the middle, so you copy that. Copy. Okay, and now you go to your inform game and you're going to paste it at the very top, right after this right here. So paste this entire thing and then you have this huge, you know, all this code that probably doesn't make any sense to you guys who are just starting uh and i'll explain how this all works later yeah it's a little bit complicated but it's not actually that hard but anyway now let me start with the start things so before you do anything you need to make a room which e everything is a room even if it's like outdoors or a garden like my first it's always a room not an area or anything like that it is a room so just call everything rooms even though if even if it's not a room, if it's like a road, still call it a room, or else the game will accept it. So we'll put the garden as a room. Make sure to put periods at the end of pretty much everything you do. As you can see on all my lines of code, I have periods. Then in parentheses, this is where you describe. Um, this is where you describe like what the garden's like. So um, you are in your garden. You see a red flower in the middle of it. There is a fence around the, go the garden, but to the north, you can see a door leading to your living room. Now, one thing that you don't actually need to do is say what what objects are inside of your room. <clears throat> I'll teach you how to make objects right after this. Because the game will automatically say you can see a red flower here. So you just need to describe the area. Now, normally I'd be much more descriptive about the garden because it's important to be descriptive to make a good game. But this is just a test example. So take note, this, none of this will make sense at all. It's just simply for testing and I was in a hurry. So anyway, now the red flower is an object. Now you, and period, like normal. And you always, always... Like, I, I would um, describe this, because if you type X and then space red flower, you could examine the red flowers. So you could put in parentheses <coughs> something descriptive about it to describe it. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but now you have to say where it is. So the red flower is in the garden. Make sure you say the exact thing that this says right here. So now it's in the garden. So now if you play, per always press this to start your game. It will say, you are in your garden, you can see a red flower in the middle of it. There's a fence around your garden, but to the north, you can see a door leading to your living room. That is what I wrote here in the description of the garden. And then, you can see a red flower here automatically set, so I could technically get rid of this. Now, I made a new room. The living room is a room. You come to your living room, and here, I, sh I didn't even need to say this because it automatically says this. It automatically says this right here. Uh, you can see table of the play out which has some bacon on it, so I can't technically delete that, but for now we'll just keep it. And then, I always like, you always want to state the directions that you can go in, so that the people, who, the person who's playing your game is not confused. <clears throat> or else I'd just be guessing what to do from the garden, so always, always state your directions. Okay, so, um... Now, you're going to say where the living room is. So, to say a room somewhere else than it is, or where it is, <coughs> say the living room is north of the garden. So, now it knows if you go north, you're going to get into your living room. So, let's go north. Now, it says, um, here's the description that I put. Yeah, I didn't need to say this because it says right here. It automatically says, you can see a red door, which is to is next to here. A table, which I put in there, on which are a plate, a bacon, uh, I don't know why it says a bacon, that's kind of weird. And a rusty key here. Uh, I put a lot of things in this room just to demonstrate a lot of the things in Form 7 can do. Anyway, here's a new thing. A supporter. A supporter's not like an object, because I made the table an object, I could pick up the object and carry it around, which would be ridiculous. So a supporter is a non-portable object, so you can't pick it up, and you can put things on it. Uh, so the plate is an object on the table. Here's a example of a shortcut. Instead of writing this out, you can just put the plate as an object on the table to speed things up. Now, the bacon is an edible object on the table. This is important because I said it's edible. That means you can eat it. That really doesn't do anything in particular, but I'll show you things you can do with eating something later. Now, I made a new room. The bathroom's a room. 
and I described it. Of course, I didn't actually need to say who saw all these things. Um, the bathroom is east of the living room. Again, I stated where the bathroom was. I said the sink is a supporter in the bathroom. So the sink, you can't pick it up, can't pull out your sink. You know, that's strong. And you can put stuff on it. The showers and enterables. Oh, I forgot to put toilet in here. Let me. The toilet is a supporter in the bathroom. Okay. So, the sink is a supporter in the bathroom. Now, I said the shower is an enterable supporter in the bathroom. Now, enterable supporter is important because enterable means you can go inside it. So, let's... Well, I'll show you that later, but you can go inside the shower. Um, you can't really do anything in particular in the shower, but it's nice to just say that. Again, you can describe all these things. Oh, and by the way, whenever you put parentheses, make sure to put a period at the end of all your parentheses like you would a sentence like that, because or else it won't accept. If you have any comments or questions, uh, well, if you have any questions or comments, leave something in the comments section. For instance, ask me uh, if you get an error when you're running your game. Um, tell me what your game's about, where and what the error was saying the problem was with, and then I can try and help you. A lot of times it's really simple things like forgetting a period or misspelling a word. So make sure to check those first. But uh, send me. you can also send me a message. Um, I'm <clears throat> uh, pretty advanced in Form 7, and I have encountered a lot of errors. I made a pretty big game. And I encountered a lot of errors when I was making that. It's actually on my Mac right now. Uh, or else I would offer it for you guys to see as an example game. <clears throat> but it it was pretty big and I encountered a lot of errors. So if you have any errors or want anything else, anything help with that you want to put in your game, then just tell me. So, continuing. So, uh, I was here. I put the toilet as a supporter in the bathroom. The toothbrush is an object on the sink. Okay, so the toothbrush is an object on the sink. There's another shortcut. I put it on the sink. And whenever you add something new, you have to press go again so it can look through all your stuff again. And it makes its little loading bar and checks if everything's right. And it says how many words there are, how many objects and people there are, stuff like that. Now, the toothbrush, yeah. And then I said Bob is a person in the bathroom. Here's a new thing. You can make... Uh, Pete, you can make different organisms or whatever you want to call them. You can make a, a person or an animal. Um, I made this a person. I don't really see any particular difference, but animals you could probably make less powerful, which I'll teach you how to do later. Okay, so now, uh, I just put in an edit so it might seem a little chunky. I, uh, messed up on this part, so I'm redoing it, but now I said Bob is friendly. So this is where we're getting into this source code here. Or, no, we attack extension, what am I saying? But, um, factions. How factions work is they determine if the and the other characters in this game are, are bad, or just normal, or they're friendly. So those are pretty much the three factions. There's hostile, new, um, neutral, and friendly. Um, so friendly and hostile will attack each other on site, so whenever they are in the same room together, they'll start attacking. Neutral, they just kind of hang around, and they don't do anything unless attacked, I guess. I've never tried attacking one, I don't really see the point. But, um, it also makes it so you can make, uh, hostile things carry stuff, and then you can't take it, you can't take anything from someone else until you kill it, so that makes looting possible. So, um, I'm reaching my time limit here, but, yeah, friendly, hostile, and, um, neutral. So I made Bob friendly, so he is friendly, and he will he will help you fight anything that's hostile. I haven't made any neutral things in here, but they pretty much are just for decoration, unless you want to make it so you can talk to them and buy stuff. Yeah, that's what neutral would be for, talking to and just making conversation and buying. So then, this is a health. So to say some, uh, you can sh if you find health up here in the source code, you can change... Not source code, sorry. You can change the default health of everything, or you can just state it, uh, whatever health you want it to be. So for realistic games, you want to have less health to make it realistic, and for non-realistic RPG-like games, you want to make everything have more health. 